Well, good morning, good morning. God bless you all, and we're so glad to have you with us here in God's house this morning, and thank you for joining us online as well. And I want to have our hearts encouraged here by the Word of God, Psalm 134. It says this in verse 2, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary, and it says, And bless the Lord. As God's people, that the Word of God tells us that we come into God's house, into the sanctuary, and He says we are to lift up our hands. It's more than even just the singing from our, our lips, offering the, the, the fruit of our thanks unto Him, but it's also the lifting of our hands. So we're, gonna, we're coming here in God's house. If you want to just stand there or uh, on, at home as you're watching here, join in as we sing and worship the Lord. I want to pray here, Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and your loving kindness. Jesus, thank you that you have saved us. Thank you that you have freed us and delivered us. Holy Spirit, thank you that you are here with us, Lord God. Your presence is here with us, with your people, Lord God, with those in the house of God, those who are watching online. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your spirit. Thank you for the spirit of grace. Thank you for the spirit of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, your presence with us, God, and we magnify you. With all our heart, God, do we bless you and lift up your name, Lord God, as we honor you, Jesus, to you. We bless you and we thank you. And if you agree, church, say amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jordan. Lead us out here in God's presence. Oh, let's just keep praising the Lord right now. Mm, lift your hands and worship Him, worship Him. Oh, God, we praise you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for our freedom, God. together this morning. Bless God. Fill my heart with joy, drawing water from salvation. 
nations well You are my strength and song In the desert I will still hold on Emptiness restored Springs of mercy from the Lord I love I've been redeemed No longer lost though I am free So all people, every nation Lift up the song of Shout it out, tell the world of Jesus' love, our God, he saves. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing out to Jesus, salvation's in his name, our God, he reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory. Drawing water from salvation's well You are my strength and song In the desert I will still hold on Emptiness restored Springs of mercy from the Lord A love I've been redeemed No longer lost, Lord, I am free So all people, every nation Lift up the song of praise. Oh, we shout it out. Tell the world of Jesus' love. Our God, my God, he saves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing out to Jesus. Salvation's in his name. at all. 
Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we pray. Come on, we'll see. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, fear cannot survive when we pray. God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high, with all creation cry, God, we praise you, oh, 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 oh. we praise you, oh, 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 we praise you, oh, 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 we praise you. Let it run. 
Praise you, Lord. Psalms 85, verse 6 says, Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Lord, revive us today. Lord, that resurrection power. Revive us today, Lord, that we feel the life of the Spirit flow through us, Lord. That we find ourselves rejoicing in you. That we can't say your name enough. We can't rejoice in you enough. That we cannot be silent. Revive us, Lord. Give us life. Revive and resurrect those parts that have died in us, that is dormant in us. Revive us again to walk circumspect with the Spirit. To begin to proclaim the goodness of God to all that will hear. That we have the boldness to proclaim the salvation and the good news of Jesus Christ, Lord. We need you, Lord. God, we need you more than we've ever needed you before. Revive us. Give us a voice. Be our strength, God, where we're weak right now, Lord. Let us be a sounding board. Let us be a voice for you. Give, us, give you praise today, Lord. We rejoice in the name of Christ. There is no other name above. There is no other name. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. There is only but one God. We give you praise today, Lord. May the world know you. May your glory fill the earth like the waters fill the seas, Lord. May people become aware of your glory. May the fear of God rest on people's hearts and cause them to hit their knees and seek you. Those with troubled lines and, and, and troubled lives, Father, will find the peace of Christ, Lord. Oh, and hallelujah, Lord. Revive us today, God, so that we can rejoice in you, Lord. We can rejoice in you, God. Oh, God, we praise you today. Give him a praise and lift your voice to him. Oh, give him the praise today. He's so worthy, Lord. Hear our voices, Lord. We cry out to you, God. Revive us today, Lord, so that we can rejoice in you. That the world will know that Jesus rules and reigns. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Woo. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Man, I'm going to stand up here right here all day long. God is just filling the house right now. God, his ears are so open to you. His heart is so open to you to embrace you today. You got any troubles today? Put it, in, put it on him. His yoke is light. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father. We glorify your name. Heal us today, Lord. Revive us today. Revive us today. And give us new life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We have come to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated if you can. You can stand up if you want. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Wow, that was awesome. Worship and praise is awesome. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. Happy fifth. Still the weekend, so we say happy fourth. Was that not a war zone last night? We were just talking earlier before service, the war zone. Everywhere we were, there was a war zone going on. I thought it was in Afghanistan or Beirut or somewhere. I thought it was somewhere in the Middle East. I would run for cover, put my helmet on. It was crazy. It's crazy. But I didn't hear any fire trucks. Anybody hear fire trucks? Hallelujah. That's one sound I didn't want to hear. But I bet they were on top high duty, man. They were overtime. They had, the, they had their gear on, ready to go. Because there was some people. As the night goes on and people begin to take some spirits and get a little intoxicated for the moment, that's when I get concerned. But hallelujah, God is good. We celebrated our country. That's, that's a birthday worth celebrating. Yeah. Happy birthday to our country. Yeah. Praise God. Well, we're going to take tithes and offerings. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Welcome to everybody in their homes right now. Thanks for joining us. You know, righteousness or right standing with God can be simply defined as doing that which is right and favorable in God's eyes. All that we do for God is a righteous act of faith. And we may not say it when we're doing it, but when we're doing it, we're expressing it. We're expressing the, our faithfulness to God by doing the works of faith. You look in James 2, verse 17, it says, Faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds or works, it is dead and useless. How can you show me your faith? If you don't have any deeds, I'll show you my faith by my good works and by my deeds. And you know, God has a response to that attitude when it's in your heart. I found it in Revelation 3, verse 8. God says, I know your works. I know your deeds. I know everything you do. He says, look, I set a door. I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. Why? Why has God set an open door before you? There's nobody shut. He says, because for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Despite what you've gone through, you've not forsaken my word, you've not forsaken my name. That deserves an open door God has put before you. See, God, is not, God has lo looked on and, and seen your works, which speaks of your faithfulness. And to that which you, have, yeah, you give yourselves to. Your purposes are always to establish God's kingdom in the earth. What he has noticed is that despite everything that you have gone through, you have not denied his name, and you have not denied his promises. You've, you've, actually, you give him the opportunity to fulfill those promises by placing in your, yourself in a place of faithfulness to him. God always looking, is always looking at the willful acts of men. He looks for the characteristics that resemble the likeness of his self. In uh, Psalms 101, verse 6, 
My eyes will look with favor on the faithful of the land. In James 2 again, in 21 talks about Abraham. To talk about this faithfulness and the deeds of faith. It says, wasn't Abraham found righteous before God because of his works when he put Isaac upon the altar? That was an act of faith. That was an act of trust in showing God that he was grateful for God and that he loved God and his faith. He had faith in God and he was going to show his faith because God is pleased with our faith. Verse 22, can't you, can't you see how his actions or deeds cooperated with his faith? And by his action, faith found its full expression. In verse 23, Abraham had faith in God and God was pleased with him. He proved that the faith was real by what he did. Amen? That's why faith pleases God. A side note regarding Abraham there, it says, it says that Abraham believed God. I gotta tell you something, to simply believe God is not an act of faith. Just to believe God is not an act of faith. It says in Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That word believe in the Greek is actually translated as have faith. So to simply believe does not, is not an act of faith. That, that's actually meant more like start uh, stating a historical fact. But when you say, having faith in Jesus Christ, you shall be saved, having faith describes the heart response of gratitude for what God has done. It means you have faith in Jesus means you love God, and that that it compels you to express that love through your faith by doing works of act and faith for him. At Romans 4.3, Paul says that Abraham's faith was accounted to him for righteousness. Righteousness is God's favor also, you know. His deeds were faithful acts of righteousness. So this morning, I say all that. So this morning, when you give, you are doing so to demonstrate your faithfulness to God. Not that you simply believe, but you have faith in God. Giving is an act of faith as much as Abraham's demonstration of his faith by his works. And his faith was made perfect as yours is. In Proverbs 28, verse 20, the last scripture says, A faithful person will be richly blessed. Today, give because you are faithful to God. Out of your demonstration of your faith in giving, you are expressing your love and your faithfulness to him. He will call you righteous as he did with Abraham. He will look upon you with favor. He will richly bless you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we just we worship, worship you today, God. And let all that we do be acts of faithfulness to you to demonstrate how we appreciate and love you. We don't simply believe, Father. We have faith in you. So we give today out of our love and faithfulness. It's not an obligation. We're not, we're, not, we're not twisting our arms. We're doing it because we want to support the kingdom of God because it's your kingdom. We want to plant into your kingdom. And the work that we see here right now before us is a work that has good soil worth planting into. So we're grateful, Lord, that you have given us a seed to plant. I pray for a blessing over everybody who has stepped forward. You will bless them because you says, behold. I put a door, an open door before you. No one can close it. And what keeps that door open is our faithfulness and demonstration of our love for you. We give you praise today. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. That's right. Give him praise if you want to. I, I imagine on your screen, you're watching. You, uh, there's different ways that you can give. It'll say on your screen. You give to uh, the Church Center app. You can go to our website. You can mail it in if you want to. I'm sure the address is on the screen. You here can drop in the box back there. So many options. Give today with gladness. Amen. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Pastor Glenn, thank you. Um, That's good. Good, good encouragement there. God is faithful indeed. Well, God bless you all. Uh, Everybody get enough sleep last night with all the fireworks going off there. 
That is, I don't know about you, but our neighborhood, they was up pretty late, so uh, same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, and he quickens our mortal bodies. <laughs> he gives us life, so thank you, Lord, you give us life. I, I want to, you know, this morning, um, I want to encourage you in God that this is a, um, it's a passage here that I, I think has great relevance for us today. Um, but it is something that there, there is some depth here. So I'm going to ask uh, that you uh, have a heart to listen here this morning in, in what uh, God's Word is, is uh, talking about here. So we're going to look at what Paul describes as two covenants. Uh, and, and we're talking about the flesh and the spirit. So we're looking here in Galatians chapter 4, verses 21 through 31. So if you want to... Uh, get your, your Bibles ready. We're going to have plenty of scriptures to look at, but just some, some thoughts here. I do want to, before we open up, um, I do want to communicate that uh, when we end service, part of our social distancing is we do need to um, leave in a, in a uh, timely manner. So no one is kicking anybody out, but just so you know, you will see the lights go off. And, and so we're asking everybody, if you want to connect and talk, let's, we can go outside and, and do that. But uh, we don't want to push anybody out or anything like that by any means, but you will notice that that is part of what we're doing, um, part of the requirements. So uh, as you see Elder Ed directing that love him, he's not the bad guy. <laughs> so, uh, but this is just something we're all just doing together. But I want to communicate that here, um, f- you know, from a family perspective of, of what's going on. Amen. Can I, can I Amen. get your agreement in that? Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's move on here. So, We've been talking about how God has taken us from from slavery uh, through sin into being sons of God, uh, sons and daughters of God when we've come to Christ and and we have we're born again by the spirit. You know, the the spirit of God, as I was meditating on this, you know, I heard the spirit say Jesus came. He he took care of the sin problem. Right. He resolved the issue of what stopped uh, relationship between man and God and that sin. And Jesus, when he came on the cross and he died for us, he took that and he fulfilled that and he resolved that, he did all the work. He said, it is finished. He ascended on high and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And then we see the significant moment in God's word. The Holy Spirit was poured out upon all flesh, upon all who would believe. So we have the Holy Spirit with us now. So the Holy Spirit is doing the work of He's sanctifying us, making us more and more like Jesus. He empowers us to live for the Lord. And so we're seeing here there's there what Paul is referring to, that there's a flesh covenant and then there's a spirit covenant. What we have is, as Christians, as believers, it's the spirit. We have the spirit of God with us, and we live and move and have our being in him by the spirit. And so uh, and what was happening in the church is they were trying to do things in the flesh, trying to do things by works, trying to do things in, in the natural, trying to do things in their own strength or their own way. And as we see in the word of God, as we also understand in how we live, we can't go live this life in God, a fruitful life in God by relying on our own strength to walk this life out. We can't do it by just doing things in our, in our own, what we think is right and doing things our own way and, and uh, trying to live out the life of God, a righteous life in our own strength. We will always f- be frustrated. And so this is what we're seeing here. Just as the Galatian churches also faced a global uh, a famine, there was a global event going on. We face a global event in the pandemic. What the church was facing was an event in, in that season similar to the, uh, something we face today. But interestingly enough, what the Galatian church, churches were doing was instead of pressing into the things of the spirit they were pressing into the the things of the flesh they were pressing into trying to do things to uh have a uh, um a facet or or an element of what seemed like a religious life but they were walking away moving away from the things of the spirit they were trying to do things in their natural by trying to please the, the, the Judaizers that were coming from Jerusalem, telling them they needed to do all these things to, to have satisfaction or to please God in a better way or, or to acceptance in God is probably a better way of saying it. 
instead of knowing that they already please God because of what Jesus had done. And con confirmation that we please God is that we have the Holy Spirit with us, right? He's a deposit. He's a confirmation that we are accepted before God. You have the Holy Spirit in you? That's God saying that you are my child and I am pleased with you. He's deposited his spirit in us, church. That's what we have. And we must understand that. We must have a perspective of that. This is how we relate to the living God. So even in that season, it's similar to us. We, we, uh, we're looking at the book of Galatians as a, as a window, something to understand what, uh, that speaks to us today in our life, in our world, out of the book of Galatians, even though it was a message that was communicated many, many, many years ago, it's relevant to you and I today. There's a relevance of what God is, God's word is speaking to you and I. He's saying to, for you and I to seek him by the spirit and not to go about life in the flesh. Not to go about living this life just day to day, never taking time to fellowship with the living God, never taking uh, what God's word says and living by that, never seeking him and, and understanding that we are to have a koinonia with the spirit of God. That's with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so we're, we're seeing here today, Paul writes about two systems of belief. He calls it two covenants. One is a life of religious bondage ruled by the flesh, revealing itself to be a spiritual slavery. And the other is a promise of freedom given by the one who fulfills the promise, Jesus Christ. Real freedom in a, is in a life led by the spirit of grace. Only through Christ and his work on the cross can mankind be delivered from slavery to self and the flesh. Only by a life surrendered to Christ led by his spirit, is where we find real and abundant life. Yeah. So as we're looking through God's word today here in Galatians 4, it's with understanding that it is Christ who fulfilled all things. Jesus fulfilled all things. You and I cannot fulfill all things. Only Christ can and only Christ has done that for us. Consider what Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 18 says. He says, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. He didn't come to destroy the Old Testament. He didn't come to destroy the Ten Commandments. He didn't come to destroy the, the law. And he didn't come to destroy what the prophets have declared in God's word. But he says, uh, uh, but to fulfill. Jesus is the fulfillment of God's word. He's the fulfillment of the promises of God's word. And he has done it. Why? Not for his own sake. Not because he needed to do it. He has done it for you and I. Amen. Believers. He has done it for you and I as followers of Christ. Every promise of God for you and I has been met by Jesus Christ. And that is why he says, I came. He didn't come to destroy those promises. If he destroyed them, then what promises will we have to stand on? How would we know that God is our healer? How would we know that God is the one who redeems? How would we know that God is the one who brings that salvation only comes through him? How would we know that he is the one who has delivered us, that he can heal our broken hearts? Only by Christ fulfilling the law and the prophets. He has done this. And so he says, for assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. We've talked about that before. That means he fulfilled even the most minute things of the law by his perfect life. That's why he was perfect for you and I. He did it for you and I, for our sake. He did it for us. So if we put our hope and rely on anything else in this life, even in ourselves, it will not fulfill or bring satisfaction of life. Now, we should also understand in this life, those ruled by the flesh will persecute the children of God. It's not something that we like to hear. It's not something that we can rejoice on, and people don't get up and shout over that. But this is what God's word tells us. God's word says, but as he who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted him who was born according to the flesh, even so it is now. Amen. Let he who has an ear hear what the spirit of God is saying to us today. Amen. Man, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you alone give us life. Jesus, 
you died and rose again that we might have abundant life. And Lord, you have poured out your spirit upon us that we are an empowered people, empowered to be witnesses for you in the earth. God, you do not forsake us. You do ne you've never left us. You've never abandoned us, God, but you are always with us. Lord, so we thank you for your word. Help me as I speak today, Holy Spirit. Let my words not be my own, but God, help me to speak what you are saying today, God. Help me to speak as your oracles, Lord. We thank you and we trust you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's, uh, so Galatians 4, starting in verse 21 here, we're, we're going to read. He says, Paul says, tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman and the other by a free woman. And that's important. But he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise, which things are symbolic. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia which corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above, Paul's talking about the new Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem. The Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Right? The new Jerusalem is ours, church. There is going to be a day where the new Jerusalem, a new heaven and new earth, a new Jerusalem will descend upon the new heaven and the new earth of which you and I in Christ Jesus are all citizens of. We belong. This is what we belong to. This is something to, to look forward to and rejoice in. And so he says, he goes on and he says, um, for it is written, rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear, break forth and shout, you who, do, who are not in labor, for the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now, we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. Say, I'm a child of promise. Child of promise. Amen. To that I say amen. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the Scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Cast out the flesh. The flesh has no part with the Spirit. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free you and I are children of the free. We have an even greater freedom than, than our country. Praise God for our country, and we're blessed because we live in the United States. But in Christ, we, are, we have an, a greater freedom that's going to extend even beyond this life. We, as the Word of God says, we're not the children of the bondwoman. We're not the children of the slave girl. We are the children of the free. Amen. So Paul the Apostle, is, he's contrasting two covenants by using Ishmael, representing the work of the flesh. And, and we should see that as that's also when we try to operate in life on our own terms, in our own way. It's always going to lead to the flesh. And, and Isaac, a life from the Spirit, led by and relying upon the Holy Spirit. Isaac didn't do anything to, to create that. This was God purposed, right? We don't do anything to conjure up or stir that up. The Spirit of God is given to us as believers. He is the gift of the Father, the promise of the Father that we have and we've received in Christ Jesus. To live a life of only believing in Christ, but not obeying and following his word. Remember what Pastor Glenn was saying during the giving? Talking about believing and faith. I'm going to expand on this. We didn't confirm our notes, but this is what the word of God is showing us. Right. So to live a life of only believing in Christ, but not obeying and following his word, not fellowshipping with him. Is living life on our own way. It will not be fruitful because this is what a life of works looks like and leaves us worn out. A life of works without faith, without the spirit of God. wears you out? That's the work of the enemy. What does the devil do? The devil tries to wear out the saints. How are we worn out? By operating in the flesh. 
by no reliance upon the Spirit of God, by no reliance upon seeking Him, fellowshipping with Him, His Word speaking to us, both the Logos and the Rhema speaking to us, God's Word taking root inside of us, growing in us, expanding in us, faith rising. Jordan was singing about let faith rise this morning in the worship. Jordan and Becky were singing that, declaring that. And I, I say yes and amen to that. We need to let faith arise in us. And how does faith arise in us? But in his presence. We have his presence with us always because of the spirit of God. But we must let faith rise up in us. In faith. Declaring that, speaking that over us. That's this because we have the Spirit of God with us always. We're this, we're the sons of the free, right? We're sons and daughters. We're child, children of the promise. And so Paul is he's contrasting this. And so we must understand that at the root of this is trying to earn God's acceptance when we operate in the flesh. Because the Spirit of God, it's the Spirit of God that tells us you're a child of God. It is the Holy Spirit. He is the one that says to you and I, you're a child of God. He is the one that's reminding us, keeping that understanding always going and what we and by faith operating that and saying, I'm a child of God. Because I believe, because the Spirit of God rises up in, within me, because the Spirit of God is in me, alive in me. And he gives me strength. Freedom is found when we forsake our way, following Christ and seeking direction from the Holy Spirit from the Word of God, from seeking the living God and hearing His wisdom, His direction. Being aware of life in His presence is where we find freedom. That's why when we come into the house of God and we worship, there's such liberty. Because we find freedom in His presence. Because of the distractions of life, the cares of the world to consume our time and attentions, we can be drawn away to other things. But Paul is communicating to the churches here so that they understand the futility that results from living a life in the flesh. The churches in Galatia were so intrigued by the law. They were so intrigued by these, these um, people, with re these religious leaders. They, were, they had such charisma. You ever seen somebody that just has such charisma about them? It doesn't matter what they're selling, but they can sell it. Right? You've been to the store. You've been somewhere. It's like, man, that person knows how to sell that stuff. Right? There's, they've got such charisma about them. And you're like, yeah, oh, okay, I'll buy it. Just because they're making you believe. Right? And that's what was going on in the churches of Galatia that Paul was writing to. They were so intrigued by what they were saying about the law that they were willing to go back into this, to leave the freedom that they had in Christ by the Spirit of God to go into the bondage of the law. That was just going to that, that proved they were unable to meet God's standards without Christ Jesus, without the aid of the spirit. To them, it was a prophetic message. Today, it's a prophetic message for us as well. Yeah. Amen. I want to share this with you. God wants his people free of all entanglements. The spirit of God says to you and I today, I want you free of all entanglements. It is time to let go of those things that entangle you. Those things that try to trip you up. Those things that try to get you distracted. Right now, many in the church as a whole are still going back and forth between two opinions. Between the flesh and the spirit. Between trusting and relying upon the living God and doing things in our own strength. Doing things in our own flesh. Doing the things that we know how to do without consulting the living God. But there is coming a, a church that will be a people who will solely rely upon the Holy Spirit. I believe we're going to see his power poured out over us, his miraculous power, lives being set free and delivered, graced by his power and his presence, bringing light into the darkness of our world. To this, you and I are called. Jesus says of you, church, that you are a city on a hill. How many of you believe that today? Amen. Amen. So in light of this, I believe that this is what we are seeing expressed by the Spirit through the Apostle Paul and what he's writing in Galatians chapter 4. When will the church stop going back and forth between two opinions? Oh, help us, Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If we approach God in the flesh, we approach Him in our self-righteousness. There's no faith in that church. There's no faith in self-righteousness. 
The flesh can never please God because there is no faith there. But when we approach in faith by the Spirit of grace, by the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, we can come boldly as sons and daughters of the promise of freedom. Now, for some context, let's look at the passages from Genesis that Paul is referring to here regarding the two sons, the flesh and grace. Genesis 16 and verses 1 through 4, it reads, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant, a slave girl, whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Interesting that those, that's the words that she used, that the Lord has restrained me. But in fact, we know that God was going to use Sarah's womb for the promise to come from. Isn't that interesting? And it happens by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Remember that, that Isaac is a work of the Spirit. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's the, he's the promise. Yeah. It is the Holy Spirit that, that did the work. And that's what Paul said in Galatians, that, that uh, Isaac is a work of the Spirit. And that's interesting, right? Because we know that Christ came. He was formed in the womb by the Holy Spirit, was he not? And so there's some interesting contra uh, or interesting correlations there that we see of what God did in, in Sarah and Abram. So, moving on. Then Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. Isn't it interesting? We do things in the flesh. Man, we mess things up. Why would Sarai think that that was the way to do it, was to bring another woman into the household, making her Abram's second wife? Oh, boy. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. He, he impregnated her, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. The work of the flesh never makes things better but always destroys, always corrupts, always makes problems worse. What happens now? Hagar sees herself as better than Sarai, and she despises her. Trouble is a brewing. Genesis 16, verses 15 through 16. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Ishmael means God will hear. God will hear. Hmm. Genesis 17, verses 15 through 19. Then God said to Abraham, now God has changed their names. As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai. Sarai meant princess. But Sarah, Sarah means noble woman. Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Praise God. Then Abraham fell on his face. And what did he do? He laughed. He fell on his face and he laughed. And he said in his heart, he didn't say this with his words. He said it with his heart. Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Then God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Praise God. Isaac means he laughs. What did Abraham do when he heard? He laughed. And what does that tell us? Don't discount what God says he will do. Don't discount God's promises. Don't forget his promises. They do not fall to the ground, but they, they do not return void to God. They do not return fruitless, but they will bear fruit in due season. Amen? Amen. Genesis 21, 9 through 12. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. That's the same thing that Paul declared to the Galatians, was it not? 
Cast out the bondwoman. Cast out the flesh. And, and so it says, And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son, because of what he had produced in the flesh. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Now, understand, there's a li- these are lives here. So we can understand why Abraham is saying, God, let your blessing come through Ishmael. And, and he's sad about it, right? And the word of God even says that at this point, Ishmael, he's still a lad. He's still young. He's not, a, he's not an old man or he's not a, a man of his own strength yet. But there can be an attachment to the flesh, church, that we must understand. And the only way that the attachment to the flesh is broken is by casting it out. Is by severing those things. It may not be easy. It may indeed be painful. But the Spirit of God is saying to us today, cast out the flesh. Don't let the flesh have a place in our life, even though it might seem like it's okay. It might seem like this is the way things are going to be. Even though it might seem like this is where God is leading us. Especially when it comes to believing and waiting on the promises of God. There is the temptation to do things in the flesh rather than wait on the Spirit and God's perfect work. Oh, I wish you'd say amen to that. Let me say that again. When it comes to believing and waiting on the promise of God, there is a temptation to do things in the flesh because God takes too long. Because we don't want to wait on God to do it the way he, in his perfect way. We would rather do it our way and say, God bless it. Lord, I know what to do. I, I've been in this long enough. I understand we're going to do it this way. And here it is, God, I made it. This is my thing. Now bless it, would you? Is this not basically what, why, what he's saying of Ishmael? God will hear. God will hear. He'll, he'll make this good. He'll bless it. Even though it's what we produce by the flesh, we're not listening to the Holy Spirit and what he is saying to what he's speaking to us. The Spirit of God doesn't, has not ceased speaking, church. We get in the flesh, we just stop listening. Because we don't want to hear. Because it's painful. Possibly. Because it hurts. Because it's truth. It's life. Interesting that God uses Sarah, right? He says, listen to your wife, Abraham. The one that I've joined you with. The one that you are one with. What she is saying is truth. It's important to hear the things that God started in the spirit. That's the direction. That's the leading that we it's important for us to follow. It's easy to get on a a pathway, a diversion. But it's always staying true to what the spirit of God has told us. That's that's where the Lord is. Amen. Amen. So now God has told had told Abraham that he would fulfill his promise and give him an heir in the earth. But instead of Abraham making an inquiry of the Lord, he made a decision in the flesh that would have everlasting effects. Abraham thought his blessing would come through Ishmael, that God heard his request by giving him Ishmael. And we even see that Abraham still wanted God to use Ishmael, the work of the flesh, but the flesh and the spirit are at enmity with each other. What does Romans 8, 7 through 9 say? It says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. The flesh can never be subject to the law of God, can never find alignment with God's word. And so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But then he tells us, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, say yes and amen to that. The spirit of God dwells in us. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Right. That's how we know we have the spirit of Christ in us. We belong to him. We're the Lord's. In order for the Spirit to the lead, to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit to lead us, the flesh must be cast out. We must cast out the flesh, not give a place to the flesh. 
not give place to anything that is contrary to the word of God, contrary to what the spirit of God is, is telling us and leading us in. Amen. So Paul is using this uh, passage as an allegory for us today. Isaac, the son of the free woman, represents those who trust in Christ. Ishmael is the son of the slave girl, the product of not doing things, God, thing, God, things God's way. I can't spit that out. The product of not doing things God's way. What we are to see is we are not slaves to religion. We must understand what it means to live by the Spirit. And see, and what happens is if we, if we do not, if we, if we uh, uh, cast out the things of the Spirit, all you have is religion. As a people of God, if we will not be a people who are led by the Holy Spirit, all we are, all we have is just a religion. We, don't, we can't bring the life of God into any situation or circumstance. We cannot bring the power of God's presence into uh, 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 as the answer for today if we are not being led by the Spirit, if we as the church of God's people, if we are being led by the flesh and not being led by the Spirit, how can we be a city on the hill? How can we bring life to a world full of darkness? How can we bring the light of God to where those who are just wandering in the darkness and are looking for some sort of answer, some sort of hope? And man, like the Tower of Babel, will, will try to do some things in their flesh and in their own strength, but misses the purposes and plans of God. That's why he set us as the church in the earth to be that light, to bear witness of what Christ has done, to bear witness and to be uh, people who are empowered to be a witness for him. As the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency in all things. Say all sufficiency in all things, church. Oh, I, I pray that you believe that may have an abundance for every good work. This is what the Word of God tells us, that God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. See, the promise of God's Word, this is where we have to let this build faith in us. The flesh isn't going to help with this. Pursuing things in the natural, doing things in our own strength will not help with faith, will not cause faith to rise up in us. But this is where we must see that, God, when you go to the workplace, when you're, even if you're online and, and people are asking you your opinion on something, you know, you're, you're in a Zoom call or, or, or a, an online conversation with work or you're in the marketplace, you're with family, however God puts you in that place, in every moment, because the Holy Spirit resides inside of you, the promise of 2 Corinthians 9, 8 is true. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. What is grace? That's the empowerment of the Spirit of God in you, church, in all of us. That you, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. So that means that even if you might feel weak in your thoughts, you might say, I have no idea what to say, but the Holy Spirit does. Amen. He knows, and he's going to tell you what to say. And that's where you just say, Lord, help me to say, right? That's why for me, I start out my day, Lord, I don't know what my day is going to bring, but God help me today, whoever I face today, whoever I talk to, Lord, that your spirit is with me and that you give me an abundance to be able to communicate life to them, to be able to express what you want me to express to everybody that I come across, because you have given me, you've graced me, no matter what I've faced, you've graced me to be able to do what I need to do. And that's not just for me. That's the promise of God's word. That's just me applying it. But that's for all of us, church. That's for all of us as a child of God, as believers. This is for all of us. The work of the Spirit in us. We are graced. All of grace bounds towards us. That means we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to have an abundance for every good work. For every good work. Connecting with our families. Talking with people. Spreading the message of the gospel. Every good work that we have all sufficiency in all things no matter what we face. Somebody comes to you and says, I've got such awful news that's happened to me. You've been given an abundance for every good work. Here's a good work that you're about to bring. You're about to bring the light of life of Jesus Christ into their lives. Amen. To live a so-called life of faith, 
but ever mindful of doing things in our own way with a reliance on ourselves is just going to leave us weak. If somebody comes and tells me, man, I've got this issue going on in my life and I just try to operate to respond in the flesh, guess what? I don't have an answer for them. But if I come responding by the Spirit of God, then I have an answer for them because God has an answer for them. It's not me, but it is the Holy Spirit that has an answer. When the Holy Spirit is teaching us today to set our hearts and minds to follow him, to hear what he is saying and not what the winds of doctrine or human thinking are saying. This means that because we bear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, just as the son of the flesh persecuted the son of the spirit, we also will face persecution in this life. This is not something to fear, church, but it is something we should not be naive about. We shouldn't be naive about these things. A follower of Christ should expect it. Now, I don't say this lightly, but I ask that you hear and that you take what I'm saying before the Lord in prayer. I believe in the coming days that we're going to see persecution of the American church more than we have ever known before in this life. Persecution has always grown the church of Jesus Christ. Up until now, much of the persecution against the church in America has been more of the result of people's hypocrisy and exposure of darkness. So people laugh because of, right, the, the enemies of God are able to uh, uh, profane God's name. When, when If the church is in a place of hypocrisy or, or uh, being exposed, that's why judgment should always begin in the house of the Lord. This is why we have communion. This is why we celebrate communion, because we should judge our hearts first. Right. First Peter 4.17 says, For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? If it begins with us first, where we say, Lord, cleanse my heart. Make me like you. Purify my lips. Purify my words. God, cleanse these hands that whatever these hands do, they are done for you. God, that by the actions, by the way we live, Lord, let us burn with Holy Spirit fire for you, God, with a holiness that only you can bring. What does Jesus say in Matthew 5, 9 through 12? Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is blessed. Blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness sake. Because he says, because what belongs to you is the kingdom of heaven. He says the kingdom of heaven is yours. You get it. That's all yours. He says, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Listen to what, the, what Jesus says to the church of Smyrna in Revelation chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. He says, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And he says, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Amen. Amen. So we cannot neglect, speaking of the Lord's return, that there will be a second death called the judgment of God, resulting in the lake of fire. In Christ, we overcome. In, in, as Christians, church, we, we don't face the judgment seat, right, of, of, of God. We don't face that second death. We face Christ right. and its reward. Yeah. We face Christ saying to it, what did you do with what I gave you? And he says, and we say, here, Lord, this is what we did with what you gave us. And his response is to us, well done, good and faithful servant, right? You were faithful in little. I'm going to make you faithful over much. That's what we have in Christ. But for those who don't believe, as Peter says, what would, what's to come to them? It's real, church. The eternal things are of the spirit. The temporary things are of the flesh. And it's important to qualify that real persecution is when you are reviled because of the gospel of Christ. Right? It's important to qualify that. Not because you, you don't agree with someone's views 
or you have some sort of political argument uh, or, or because of our opinions. Well, I think it should be like this. Well, no, I think it should be like that. No, that's not persecution. If someone insults you because of your words where you could not control your tongue or rendering evil for evil, you're taking vengeance, that's also not persecution. I'm talking about reproach, criticism, mockery because of Christ, because of your stand for Christ. You're saying, I follow the Spirit of God. I'm, I'm submitting to the Holy Spirit to lead me, and this is what I believe the Lord says to you. And they respond, oh, that's a bunch of foolishness. That's garbage. They mock you, yeah. right? That's persecution. Right. First Peter says it like this in verse four, or chapter 4, verses 14 and 16. He says, if you're reproached for the name of Christ... Blessed are you. You're blessed if you're reproached. If you, you, you declare your faith and your trust in Jesus and how you know and, and you're stating that he's the only hope of life. And the, the response is, ah, oh, I don't want to hear any of that Jesus stuff. It's not real. It doesn't help me. It doesn't do any good. And they make all these lies about it. Blessed are you is what Peter says. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Amen. Amen. That's how you know the Spirit of God is in you, church, because you declare it. Right? right? You declare it's Jesus. Yeah. It's Jesus that delivered me. It's Jesus that has guided me. It's Jesus that has brought me to where I am today. Yeah. And to those who hate God, they may mock, but know also that it's a witness for those who there's those who are hearing you yeah. and they're receiving the message of the gospel. Right? On their part, he, Christ, is blasphemed. But on your part, he's glorified. God is glorified when you're being persecuted, church. Right. When the day comes, you're being mocked because of we stand on God's word. In that moment, God is being glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. Don't let yourself, don't be persecuted because you're all in up in people's business, right? Don't be, don't be thinking that I'm being persecuted because I'm a Christian. No, you're not. You were all being all nosy. You're trying to get up in their business where you shouldn't have been. We should also understand that as a believer, we cannot follow the flesh, but rather the leading of the spirit is where we find peace. Yes, Amen. In all of this, we are not children of the bondwoman, but we are children of the free. In light of this, it's important that we be aware what the Lord has done and is, in, is doing in our lives, church. Be aware that, the, that God is at work in you and I. He's making you and I more and more like Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have a crown, the crown of life, waiting for you and I. The promise of freedom is for all of us. Amen. 2 Corinthians 1.20, I want to close with this. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. All the promises are yes, and amen, in Christ Jesus. And they happen through us, church. The promises are for us, for God's people. They're for us. And so as we know this, we know that Jesus is the one who fulfills the promise that we can stand in faith, knowing what he said will come to pass. In Christ, we have been set free from the law of sin and death, that we might freely live in righteousness and peace. We are the children of promise. Amen. And to that church, I ask you, state it. Say, I'm a child of promise. Amen. Amen. Let's let's pray as we close here this morning. Well, Father, thank you for your word. God, I know that sometimes your word is not the not always easy to receive. God, I, I ask that we would receive it, Lord God, that each of us, that we would hear what you're saying by your spirit. God, that there are even things for the future that are coming upon us. But Lord, we know that you're always with us. And we know that you are going to be glorified. God, we desire that the, the church, uh, your church, would rise up large in the earth, Lord God, and, and be the city on the hill that you've called us to be, the light of the world. But God, that, that pathway to get there 
Lord, it is a difficult road, but you will never leave us. You'll never forsake us, and you're helping us. You're growing us. You're taking us, Lord God, from understanding that the flesh has nothing to do with us. But, Lord, it is by your Spirit that we can declare, Abba, that we can declare that we are a child of God, that we say to you, Father, and that we are yours and you are ours. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the one who delivers. You are the one that brings freedom. God, thank you for your presence with us everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, Lord, by your spirit, you are with us. And you empower us to be bold because you say that we're yours. You say that we're yours, that you're our father. We belong to you. And God, you give us that boldness because we, you're ours. So, God, we thank you today. Father, I pray for everyone who is here, and I pray for everyone who can hear my voice today. God, I pray that each one would be strengthened by your spirit, that each one would be encouraged by your word today, that they would see your direction, that we would all see that it is by the spirit, the Holy Spirit, working in us. This is where we find life in you, God. Life in the Spirit. Not by doing things in, in our own works, and our own thinking. So God, we trust you, Lord. Trust you even in this moment, Lord, that you're working in us. Right now, just in this place, Lord, we do submit to you. Holy Spirit, do your work in us. As we rest in your peace, as we rest in your freedom, as we rest knowing that you love us, God, that you speak to our hearts right now. That the words of casting out the, the, the flesh would ring true in our hearts, Lord God, that you are doing your work in us. And Holy Spirit, that you rise up big in us. Holy Spirit, that we allow you to have you, the rightful seat in our heart. Holy Spirit, that you lead us in all things, that we stop trying to lead, to lead ourselves. But we would say to you, Lord, lead us. Lead us. If you don't lead us, Lord, then we don't want to go. But Holy Spirit, if you're leading us, then we will follow. Wherever you take us, wherever you direct us, Lord God. Thank you for your work in us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for whoever needs healing. Lord, there's healing here. Thank you for whoever needs restoration, Lord God. There's restoration. Thank you, Lord God, for even those who need conviction. Lord, there's, there's conviction here to set us on the right path. Lord, for those who need repentance. Lord, you, the gift of repentance is here that we might receive it and rejoice and be glad because we know that it's only you that can heal a broken heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Amen. I want to speak to those both here in the auditorium and uh, watching online. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, here's an opportunity. The gift of salvation. Everything that we've spoken of here, we cannot have this without a relationship with Jesus Christ, without the forgiveness of God, without the blood of Jesus cleansing us of all our sin, without the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross to where he said, as he died, it is finished. That finished work for us. If you, don't, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we want to give you this opportunity. I'm going to pray. And if you believe by faith that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and that he forgives you and that you have eternal life, if, if you say yes to this, I want to pray with you. I want to seal this in prayer. So repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of all my sin. I repent before you of all my old ways. 
and I exchange my life for yours. New life in you. I receive you, Holy Spirit, making me brand new. My name is now written in the book of life. I have eternal life, and I'm yours forever, just as you are mine. Amen. If you believe that by faith, tell somebody. If you believe that by faith, begin to let the word of God consume it, eat it, live in it. Begin to learn how to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the koinonia of the Spirit of God. Find a house of God to worship in. Find a family of God to become a part of. These are the things that the Lord tells us in his word. It's definitely not what the flesh says. The flesh is going to say otherwise. But the Spirit of God declares these things and tells these things. They are true. They remain true no matter what. So we rejoice with you. And as family, our privileges, we receive communion. Church family, you may have your communion elements here at your chair. And so we're going to receive that at this time. So go ahead and open that up. I want to read to you the words of Revelation. Chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. This is what we're doing here. We're dining with him. We're fellowshipping with him. Having this time. It's, it's intimacy with the living God. We've opened the door. We've let the Lord Jesus in. That's our relationship with him. But he comes and he's with us. He dines with us. So take the, the wafer representing the body and break it in remembrance of him, what he's done. Amen. Same manner, take the cup and open it. The cup representing the blood of Christ representing the new covenant that we have, what Jesus has done for us. So we are with him forever. We are always one in him, just as you and I are one with each other because of Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you for what you've done. Receive it now and drink it. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you've done for us. We do not forget we remember, and in all of this, we celebrate your death until you return. We do this because we know that you one, one day are coming back. We do this because we know that you have died for us, you have risen again, and we celebrate all that you have done. We honor you, and we bless you, and we thank you. In your name, we pray. Amen. Becky and Jordan are going to lead us out, and we're going to close here in worship. Loving God, blessing him. Thank you for being with us today. We love you all. God bless you all. Becky and Jordan, lead us out.
we'll see you break down. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we pray. Come on, lift it up. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Oh, we cannot survive when praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, Thursday night Bible study. See you next Sunday. God bless you.